You're tuned in to the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3, recapping the night that was in the world of sports. That's not to say that they don't respect the run game that you have, but you're talking about one quarterback leading the, the conference in passing so far this year. And remember, he didn't start the first game. All right. Still played a lot, though. And also bringing some humor to your day. I, I just don't want to disappoint you. I just... As much as I disappoint you, I don't want to disappoint you in some things that you expect from me. Hear the show live weekday mornings at 6 on Double T 97.3 or on the Double T 97.3 mobile app. Thank you for being with us this morning on Lubbock Sports Station, Double T 97.3 and Double T 97.3.com with Jamie Lynn and Jeff McGuire. I'm Chuck Hines. Looks... Uh, Looks like uh, you're going to have a quarterback in the uh, transfer portal. I don't know if he's technically in yet. Um, all reports are that he is uh, going to or has entered the transfer portal. There's one reason why Donovan Smith may not have entered that in. And I don't I don't know if finances mean anything to him or not. I'm sure that they do. But for players that... Um, enter the transfer portal before December 13th, which is the last day of fall examinations, according to the AJ, um, they would give up almost $3,000 in uh, in money. 2,990 to be exact. Well, that would be silly of him to enter the portal. This close to it. This close to that. Yeah. 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 So technically he may not be in it. Um, but he has to be a member of the university or, you know, not in the portal um, through December the 13th, or he gives up um, almost $3,000. Um, according to this article in the AJ, um, Tech will pay $1,990 per semester to athletes who are academically eligible on course to graduate on schedule not having their names in the portal and in good standing with their teams at the end of the semester. I think this is all athletes, Jamie. I'm not, I'm not certain on that, but I think it is. Um, then there's additional money that's paid based on your grade point, average increments, uh, performing five hours of community service, participating in name, image, and likeness education, community service, and personal and career development training. Okay, so... So technically speaking, he may be, he may be still in it. He would have uh, two years left. Donovan Smith would uh, passing for uh, 1,181 yards this year, seven touchdowns, and excuse me, this is in 2021. This year, uh, he had 1,505 yards and 12 touchdowns. You know, and he ran for three as well, and helped helped you beat Houston in double overtime. Helped you beat Texas, obviously in overtime, and then uh, was. Um, you know, productive in the Oklahoma game, uh, catching a touchdown pass and running for one. Well, he's productive in a lot of other mm-hmm. games. With sure. The, the way sure. they were using him. Sure. I mean, he was used sparingly, but sure. he was still scoring for you and picking up first downs and all that good stuff. So I, I guess yesterday, I mean, for I mean, we, we speculate an awful lot, but uh, we read the tea leaves correctly yesterday. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Um uh, although let's, none of us should be naive in thinking that, you know, all three of these guys were going to stay, especially when you look at, at the transfer portal and the number of guys uh, who are who are transferring. And I, I, I don't know that there's necessarily a spot for everybody, but they sure feel like there is, right? If you're putting yourself in the transfer portal, you're basically saying to your current university, uh, hopefully, you're saying, "Hey, I appreciate the opportunity." I feel like there's a better opportunity for for me somewhere else. I'm going to risk it and see if there is. But not everybody's going to find necessarily the same same spot, same same landing. Some place. of it's all very confusing to me. I mean, Donovan Smith makes sense, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Okay, but like the NC State quarterback, six ACC starting quarterbacks in the portal, starting quarterbacks, six of them. I mean, the NC State quarterback, for example, injured this year after playing us, uh, got injured. He was the conference preseason offensive player of the year. Obviously, he didn't win that because he missed most of the season. But that's a guy that's been there, I mean, his whole career, has been a star for them. Obviously, 
coming back if he's healthy, he's the guy. But he said, I mean, is he does he really have a better opportunity somewhere else, or does he just want something different? That's a great. That's a great I mean, question. I mean, I have a hard time thinking he has a better opportunity. I mean, he's their guy, mm-hmm. and you would think they would love to have him back. Sure. Heck, there's one in the Big Twelve with Spencer Sanders. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't. I see that one. I just uh, the NC State one. I just don't understand. Spencer Sanders. I I don't know. Maybe maybe they just um, maybe Spencer Sanders feels like. You know, he and Gundy are not on the same page. I guess that could be the same thing in NC State. Well, he's I mean, been there be five fair. years. I mean, it's like yeah. that's his that's his school. That's his legacy. That's his that's yeah. you know. And, I mean, and he would be the starting quarterback there again next year. Mm-hmm. I mean, is he really going to get a better opportunity somewhere else? And you know, at can, a place can, where he already knows the offense and the coaches know him and he knows them. And I mean, he knows the best place for pizza and burritos and you know where to get a good cold beer, where to take his girlfriend, blah blah blah. All those things. I just, I mean, I traps. really feel like, I know some people laugh at me about this, but I just really feel like the social media aspect of it is part of it now. And that if I go somewhere and I'm there for four years, nobody ever hears my name. I'm not trending. Nobody ever is, is, yearning for me on social media come play for us and nobody's talking about me i just go there and i play i don't get any no nobody's nobody's you know promoting me nobody's talking about me i don't have two different fan bases begging me to come play for them i'm just a guy that goes and plays at one school and i think it's like the cool thing to do now right if you don't transfer at least once you're like forgotten. The only time we heard about you is when we were recruiting you to come here, and then you just you just go away. That may be part of it. I also think that there's I don't a, think it's the only thing. Yeah, I think there's also the grass is greener, which mm-hmm. we all suffer from. You know, in in different stages of life. You know, you may you know you may be at a job and you may be going the guy across the street or the, you know down the street or you know in another town. It's got a better opportunity for you, and then. And then you go, and sometimes it is, and and then you go, and sometimes you go, man, that place I was working for, that's a pretty good place. They really, they really took care of me. They let me slide out a little early when my kid had, you know, a play or a basketball game or whatever. I don't know. I, I somebody says this: um, these quarterbacks in the portal, it's all about the Benjamins. They are testing free agency after seeing some of these sure. quarterbacks get paid. Most of these guys aren't NFL guys. I. I think that's I think that's part of it. Too. I think one hundred percent accurate. Yep, I think that that's very fair. There, the, the the NIL part of this is is massive. And again, it feels like to me the world of college football and college sports could have handled the transfer portal, and they could have handled the NIL. But them coming in both together and having both of them, and now you have. NILs saying to guys, hey, come transfer over here because we'll yeah. get you paid more. It's it's the NILs are pulling guys to transfer more. Yeah, like. and, and the transfer portal was was technically first and then the NIL stuff. Mm-hmm. But I mean it was it was it was bang bang. Yeah. And and so now what you have, and and look, let's not be naive. I'm sure that there's plenty of whispering of you know recruiting of these guys if they if you learn that they're disgruntled um and gals too because it could be the same in whether it's you know basketball or other sports i don't even think you have to learn if they're disgruntled you just whisper in their ear hey i I think you're you're gonna make you're gonna make more money here uh this question do y'all think coach joy mcguire knew donovan smith was entering the portal before he was interviewed sunday night about the bowl game Yes, yes i do yes I, I think it's curious he talked about Shuck and Morton and didn't mention Smith at all. Right. No, we talked about this yesterday. That was that was a I don't think you have to be curious com- anymore. No. I think it was obvious that that's yeah. why he didn't no. get brought up. He was he was not asked about Donovan Smith. He was asked about Tyler Shuck and he said the reason Shuck was going to be the starter was because of how he played and that Baron Morton was still not 100%. But in every other setting, in every other time, he has mentioned all three and Sunday night he did not. So yeah, he he knew, of course, he knew. He's not obligated to tell anybody because nobody asked him that question. So, but he he knew for, for without a doubt. 
This is the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3, getting you ready for today's sports day. You know, three of the first four games have been at home, so you know at some point in time you're going to have to venture out outside the 806, so that'll be... That'll start this week. While having a little fun along the way. Always good if you can blame it on somebody else, right? Yeah, sure. Especially some media guy. Sure. Right, some media guy. Catch the show live weekday mornings from 6 to 9 on Lubbock Sports Station. Double T 97.3. Time for this day in sports history. Today is 6 December 2022. Here's Jeff McGuire. 1925, a record 73,000 people pay to watch the Chicago Bears beat the New York Giants 19 to 7. Mm. That's a bunch of people that early. No doubt. That's a bunch of people today. Mm -hmm. 1960, Major League Baseball American League grants the American entertainer and businessman Gene Autry a franchise. It would be the Los Angeles Angels. Then he'd make them the California Angels. And then all that. Gene Autry, the singing cowboy. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. 1961, the 27th Heisman Trophy is awarded to Ernie Davis of Syracuse. Mm. Syracuse. First African-American to win the award. Hit the fast-forward button to 1986. The 52nd Heisman Trophy is awarded to Vinny Testaverde from (laughs) Miami, Florida. He could could sling it, couldn't he? A little bit. So could his son. A little bit. Was a Red Raider. <laughs> For a little bit. <laughs> For a little bit. 1988, Milwaukee Bucks win their 1,000th NBA game. Second fastest franchise to that mark. Hmm. I would not have guessed that. I wouldn't either. Mm-mm. Do you have a? Do you have who was the fastest? Without looking, I'm guessing it's Boston. Uh, okay. Okay. I was going to go with the Lakers, but... <clears throat> Lakers were in Minneapolis for a while, so does that count? I would imagine that counts, but I would still say Boston would have been first. 1992, really good day if you lived in San Francisco. Because in the afternoon, Giants signed a record $43 million contract with Barry Bonds from the Pittsburgh Pirates. So he would then play for them. And then that night, the San Francisco 49ers wide receiver Jerry Rice catches an NFL record 101st touchdown in a 27-3 victory over the Miami Dolphins at Candlestick Park. Mm. And, Chuck, I'm apologizing to you for this. Your home state loses to Oklahoma in the 13th Big 12 championship game in 2008. I'm fine with that. And then they lost... You talking about Missouri? ...to Alabama in the SEC championship game. Mm Mm-hmm. In 2014. Yeah, I'm fine with that. So, I'm sorry. It's it's all good. It's never good when your home state loses. (laughs) It is uh, National Gazpacho Day. Uh, It's National Microwave Oven Day. Okay. And one that I'm completely confused by. National Cook for Christmas Day. Oh, okay. Well, maybe you're getting ahead of it. It's the 6th. There's nothing you're cooking today that I want to eat on the 25th. maybe, Maybe the hard candy, right? Fudge or something like that? There's nothing that I would ma- I couldn't make enough fudge. I to think have if it you be. make one of those fruit cakes that people mail around this time of year, <laughs> today, I don't even actually know if they do mail them around. It's just kind of like a thing. Today would be people. a good day to make it. I think those will still be yeah. okay by Christmas. You know, my dad actually likes fruit cake. Really, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. Okay, so send him all your fruit cakes to him, and he mm-hmm. will enjoy all of them. Uh, happy birthday, Johnny Manziel is thirty, mm. and Sarah Rafferty is fifty. And on this day in 1941, 600 miles northwest of Hawaii, Admiral Yamamoto, commander of the Japanese fleet, announces to his men, the rise or fall of the empire depends upon this battle. Everyone will do his duty with the utmost efforts. Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, U.S. territory was their target. Tora, Tora, Tora. Hoping to catch the U.S. fleet anchored. In the uh, port, their uh, spies in Hawaii reported that Sunday would be a good day to attack. Mm-hmm. And that is this day in sports history. All right, this day in sports history. I've got one more birthday for you. I, I do not know this man. I'm not a fan of his. I don't I don't dislike him. He sometimes comes off, I think, as a, a little almost angry but um, on TV. But uh, he's a tele, televangelist. 
And I didn't know this. You see him occasionally, or probably have heard of him, born and raised in Lubbock, Texas, 86 years ago today, the televangelist, music musician, and author Kenneth Copeland, born in Lubbock. Okay. I have no idea who that yeah, is. Yeah, that, that, that does not surprise me. But I mean, um, he's one of those one of those guys you see on the Sunday morning channels, you know, speaking it, delivering okay. it. That guy. And asking for it. Yeah. Yeah, I just yeah. looked his picture up and I'm yeah. like, oh, it's that guy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very familiar he, with that guy. Yeah, he, he kind of looks like um, the old Purdue Boilermaker coach. Um, Gene Cady? Gene Cady, yeah. <laughs> see a little Gene Cady in him, Jeff? Maybe just a little, just a, just a, just a skosh. All right, uh, six fifty-two this morning here on the morning drive. Thoughts, comments, the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Go to double t dot com for that or the mobile app. I don't know if you saw this or not, but Seth Luttrell, who spent some time on the Mike Leach staff here in Lubbock, uh, and then went on to other places, including North Carolina and North Texas, is not going to return to the Mean Green. Uh, he was a guy, and they that, were in their conference championship game. Yeah, right. And he mm-hmm. took them to like six bowl games. I think they just felt like he had gone about as far as he could go. You know? Um, so, you know, for him, there's only three coaches in the history of North Texas to leave with a 500 or better record. Those three uh, include Seth Luttrell. The other two are in the College Football Hall of Fame. Uh, Hayden Fry and former tech coach Jerry Moore, who had obviously his greatest success at Appalachian State. Mm -hmm. But uh, Seth Luttrell took him to six bowl games in seven years and two trips to the Conference USA Championship game. He he was the guy that was a hot coach several years ago, and uh, a lot of people thought that he was going to take the the K-State job at one point in time, Mm -hmm. but uh, that was was not the case. So... uh, he will be. Uh, they're they're looking for a new uh, a new head football coach. Uh, somebody says this. You guys should look up the inventor of the microwave. Great story of overcoming. Okay, uh, I'll look that up. Uh, this with regard to Kenneth Copeland. Is he related to former LCU head basketball coach John Copeland? I don't know. But that'd be a good thing to find out. And then this guy says, uh, I thought he always looked like Andy Griffith. Yeah, you know, I get that one more. Yeah, I get the Andy Griffith more. Sheriff of Mayberry. Yeah, yeah. There's probably some truth to that. Big fan of Andy Griffin? I'm not a hater. Okay. I'm not, Just, I, was it not something I watched. Pointing television yeah. for you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Getting your sports day started the right way. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3. Breaking down the biggest games. If Texas Tech does not win the Big 12 Football Conference, who are you rooting for to win the conference? If Tech does not win it this year. Well, busting some chops along the way. I hold back on sending you stuff. I mean, I'm very, very, very judicious. We spend three hours a day, five right? days a week together. We why do, why yeah. would we need to communicate during the weekends? <laughs> right. Save we it for the show. We, we, stay, we do. We save it for the show. Just... Tune into the Morning Drive live weekdays from 6 to 9 on Lubbock Sports Station. Double T 97.3. Thank you for being with us with Jamie Lent and Jeff McGuire. I'm Chuck Hines. The uh, Christmas shopping season. Are you, are you shopped out yet? You started yet? I bought. Um, you bought your gift yet that you'll give to the wife to wrap under your tree. I bought presents for our company Christmas party. Oh, okay. Okay. Presents. I thought there was just. I thought it was just a present. Uh, my, mine is multiple pieces in in my present. If you get a present. For if you get mine, there's mm-hmm. two things in there. Two things in there. Mm-hmm. Okay, the white elephant. Um, yeah, gift yeah. exchange that we're gonna mm-hmm. gonna do. Mm-hmm. Okay, Jeff McGuire, you. It's a it's a Chiefs visor. Is it? It's a I've Chiefs got one. visor. Yeah. Okay, if I don't yeah, get it, I'm, I'll never, be okay. You never know, man. You yeah, I've another only one. got like seven or one eight might get a hole in hats. it. Oh wait, it already has a hole in it. But <laughs> <laughs> right. Right, it's got a big hole in it. Uh, I've done some shopping and already screwed up one of them. That's fun. My uh, sister wanted a uh, wireless keyboard mm-hmm. for her uh, home computer and her workstation kind of thing. Right. And her favorite color is purple. 
So I went looking for a purple keyboard for my si wireless keyboard for my sister. And I don't know if you guys know what a mechanical keyboard is. No. Um, it's a really fancy keyboard, basically. But um, all the keys are, like, capped. Like, you can change the color of those caps. So you can have them fit whatever theme you want for a gaming rig. Um, I got my sister the caps for a keyboard and not the keyboard itself. So you're going to send that back? Uh, no, We're, I might buy the keyboard to go with those caps and go that way with it. So she gets the keyboard she needs and she already has the caps. But yeah, it, she and I both feel kind of dumb about it. Oh, we so both you've told her it. already? She's already gotten it. We didn't find it. Find out. She got it, and what it was until she got it, she went, I think we made a boo-boo. Then she sent me a picture, and I went, yep, that's a boo-boo. You realize Christmas isn't for another... My sister's birthday is in November, so we kind of do a double gift. I got you. I got you. I don't know about you, but that, I th think that sounded like a very McGuire story. It does very I, much so, mm -hmm. yeah. Very very much so. Mm -hmm. Not like. just that, not that they messed up on it. I mean, mm -hmm. we've all got a gift that we thought, but sure. it was the com comments right. between the two of them that mm -hmm. sounded very McGuire esque. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. we come by it honestly. Yeah. <laughs> come by it honestly. I'm yeah. guessing she has a very similar personality issue. Yes. Yeah. Mm. That's good. That's God, good. God. But your dad, no. Oh no, same personality. Yeah, same then, really. Okay. Like cookie cutter, stamp, stamp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what? What about uh, Papa McGuire? Have you gotten his yet? Uh, does he have his yet too? No, he does not. Okay. Uh, my the problem with my father, I don't want to just get him a nice bottle of uh, the gentleman. Mm -hmm. Everybody's gonna get him that, and he's always appreciative of it. That's what he prefers to drink. But there's got to be something else we can do. Sure. He's also really hard to shop for. Because what a picture of you and him. That would require both of us sitting still long enough with each other to take said picture. Um, my dad's also be a the blur because their mouths would be talking. No, it's we're not in the same room. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're throwing, here. A, you're throwing a flag on that one. I, I'm, I'm just like, it feels like that's coming from somebody who shouldn't be throwing right. that shot. Oh, yeah, probably not. Yeah. It's a pot calling the kettle black. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, the, but it, us being doubt. in the same room together to take the picture would be hard. Gotcha. Um, and he's also one of those guys that if he wants something, he goes and buys it. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if his birthday or Christmas is next week. And someone says, hey, this would be a really great gift. Oh, it'd be a really great gift to have now. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how he operates. 719 this morning here on the morning drive. Uh, this from the Yates Flooring Center chat line. No controversy at all. Shuck won the last three and earned the start. Even if Barron is 100% on bowl day, he is QB2 that day, no doubt. This from the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Do you think the jockeying and misinformation regarding quarterbacks internally and externally will cause trust issues with future quarterbacks and otherwise? I don't know what the communication was like internally because we're not in the room. Okay. So it may be a, been a completely different message internally than externally. Um, I think that probably moving forward, I'm sh I'm sure they'll look at this and go, "There's things that we could have handled, we could have done differently." I think all coaching staffs probably think that. Yeah, none of them yeah. expect to be perfect. I think they probably claim said, to be. Perfect. You know, we we did this as about as well as we could. You know, maybe we could have done a better job. Um, so. I don't. I don't mean. I, I don't know. I mean, what? What? What changes? I mean. It, I mean, at the end of the day, Donovan Smith's going to realize he's QB three. Mm -hmm. Then he's going to be. He's going to leave. Yeah, he's going to yeah. leave. Yeah, he's going to leave. Mean, so. or, or even if he's QB two, mm -hmm. he might still be leaving. So I. I don't know that anything they did. I mean, hurt the possibility of all three guys staying. But let me whatever. ask you this: if 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 they'd have said. If they just say, because he was asked, I think I asked the question at the end of the spring workouts, you know, or even at the start of the fall workouts, that Tyler Shuck was heads and shoulders above everybody else. Do you think he would have lost a quarterback in August? No. What if you'd said that in March? Probably. Or April? Maybe. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Probably. Uh, Mark wants to know if Donovan's going to the bowl game. I'm going to assume not. I'm I'm going to I'm going to assume I'm going to assume not. Mm -hmm. But um, we'll see. They did say that all the quarterbacks going to play, and they did. Yeah, they did. Yeah, 
Mm -hmm. In bits and pieces, there's there's no question. 721. All right, uh, piece of basketball news. And I was listening to Red Raider basketball with Mark Adams last night on my way home. And Jeff Haxton asked him about Fardos AMAC. And he said that he would get the cast removed within the next week or so. And then they would take a picture of it and begin rehab. And uh, that hopefully he would be ready by January 1. Awesome news. So that is awesome news. That is that is awesome news, and I've said this before. My understanding is that they've been taking that cast off for him to do some rehab work. So it's not just been a cast that's been on for X number of weeks or even months. Um, so it's not like it's got to be. It's been just totally frozen in that cast, uh, and I don't know how much movement has taken place or what, but I'm going to assume that they've massaged it or he's tried to move it around or he swam with it or he's tried to get some kind of movement with it, but clearly there's going to be some atrophy and and there's going to be some time for him to take some time for him to rehab. But he's been shooting the basketball, and and Hax was talking about how he's on his his little bicycle thing. He's, you know, he's got the knee deal with the with the truck, you know, and he's like out there shooting threes. Knee deal with the truck. You know, the with the two wheels, you know. Truck. You know, it's like a your knee truck or whatever. Scooter. 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 <laughs> Scooter. I mean, better, better, better way to call it. I can draw it for you. You know, your little handle. Oh, man. Your little handle. You know, get the, get the two wheels. <laughs> kind of looks like a truck, you know. You got the. No, for, it looks like a scooter. Yeah. yeah. You got, you got, it doesn't got, have a six foot bed. It can't be a truck. You got that seven foot guy there, you know, and then he's. And I'm, I'm going to show you the. I'm going to show you the picture. Here. See there, isn't that a good looking picture of of Fardaz on his uh, on his uh, little scooter scooter thing and yeah. then shooting baskets. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah. it'd be, be great if you could have him back by Iowa State. That'd be fantastic. Yeah. I, I, and I don't. I don't know what the how realistic that is. Don't know the severity of the injury. Obviously, it's been severe enough that he's been you know out for quite some time. Um, so hopefully, hopefully he's able to uh, to get that uh, get that going uh, for the Lady Raiders. Katie Farrell, who uh, had surgery on her hand, uh, is expected to play today. Mm, that's good news. So um, you know the the thing is is that you know. She, she had a little contact, I think, in practice yesterday. Coach Gerlich saying she went down to the floor and she was like, ah, you know, but I mean, that's Katie Farrell. I mean, she is a physical, aggressive player. And for the team that they're playing today in Sam Houston State, they're going to be uh, aggressive. This is a team that averages 45 rebounds a game. It's like the fourth leading rebounding team in the country. So they're going to fight inside. They're going to arm bar you. They're going to try to block out. I try to get a lot of second chance points. So you need somebody like Katie Farrell in there today to to help with that. You're listening to the Morning Drive podcast from Lubbock Sports Station, Double T 97.3, recapping the night that was in the world of sports. A little bit later on tonight, uh, we'll have uh, the Astros and the Diamondbacks. That'll be at 8. And then the Rangers playing at Seattle uh, tonight. And also bringing some humor to your day. Was it pretty big? Yeah. I mean, it's impressive? It's, yeah. Was it fascinating? It was. I thought it was fascinating. It kind of smelled, but I mean. <laughs> Hear the show live weekday mornings at 6 on Double T 97.3 or on the Double T 97.3 mobile app. All right, Chuck and Jeff, here's my question for you today. You know how sometimes we'll talk about team and maybe you lose, maybe you win, whatever, but you would say, ah, we lost this one, but I bet if we played 10 times, we'd win oh, seven of those games. Sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. We've said that before. Okay, we sure. win nine of that. Yeah. But we lost this one. Okay. All right. If you look back at the 2022 Red Raider football mm. season, what is the one game you'd like a redo on? Feeling like if we played it again, I think the Red Raiders would have a good chance to win it. I'd like a redo on K-State, uh, even if it's in Manhattan. Um, you... Uh, you, you win that game and you're playing for a Big 12 championship. Um, you lost 37 to 28. I'd, I'd like to go back to the moment where uh, Trey Wolf is going to kick a field goal and just say, hey, let's... Uh, let's make this. Let's make this and see what happens. Oklahoma State. I know it doesn't give you what the Kansas State game does, but for how they finish the season versus how you finish the season, 
I would love to play that game again. That was my other game that I, that I was contemplating. But, yeah. Okay, so I don't think NC State or TCU are teams that I look at and say, unless we were playing the NC State towards the end of the season that didn't have their quarterback. Mm-hmm. But I didn't look at those games and feel like you should have won those games. Obviously, we had a chance in the TCU game. We we battled in that game and played pretty well for a while. But I think ultimately TCU is a better football team than Texas Tech. Okay. Same thing with NC State. So I'm with you guys and and feeling like it's the you know you have Kansas State, Oklahoma State, and Baylor. I mean, you just got so dominated by Baylor that day. But it's also hard to look at them and you know, see where they finished and how they played after they they played the Red Raiders and feel like, man, you know, you were the you you quite very quite possibly were the better team. Mm-hmm. You just didn't didn't play that well that day. But I think ultimately my answer is Oklahoma State as well. And I think Jeff's excuse me, Chuck's answer is a good one because of what it would mean. Obviously the fact that if you had beaten Kansas State, you have that win, Kansas State takes an L instead of a W and you're playing in the Big 12 championship, that would have been pretty cool. But I feel like Oklahoma State, who Oklahoma State truly was, um, and what they turned out to be would be a much more beatable team. I think Kansas State turned out to be a really good football team. Oklahoma State turned out to be not the same. And it feels like if we had played Oklahoma State towards the end of the season, we'd have had a better shot at it. So I think I'm going to agree with Jeff and feel like if in that situation, in that scenario that I threw at you guys, if we played Oklahoma State 10 times, that we would get the better of them more than more than half of the time. And again, that was a game where it just felt like you, again, I'm not guaranteeing it, mm-hmm. but if Baron Morton doesn't get hurt, it looked like your felt like your offense was clicking and you were doing great things and you had a great show. sure no no I think I think that's very I think that's very fair now let's reverse this for a second how many teams in the Big 12 do you think would love to play Tech again Texas sure Texas, would that is no hundred percent fair Houston sure would too yeah probably Oklahoma I don't know that Oklahoma would I would put uh, Iowa State ahead of Oklahoma on that list okay I, I all of the above so far for yeah. me. See, I don't know that I would. Houston would want to play Tech again Houston just because they want to play Houston. I mean, Houston controlled most of the game. Should have won that game. I mean, yeah. they Dana basically gave that game away. His, yeah, his they coaching. controlled that game. Yeah, I mean, they they certainly had opportunities to to win that game in regulation and 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 did not. And we just and man, it. how much different is our season if you don't win that game? You're six and six. Are you? <laughs> well, if everything else stayed the same. You don't know. Why no? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it motivates us so much we never lose again. <laughs> Maybe so. Maybe so. Maybe, Maybe we were so. eleven and one. Maybe so. <laughs> Jamie, whatever you're drinking over there, you need to share. Yeah. <laughs> but you can't be certain either way. No, you can't. No, no, you can't. But I, I, I think it's fair to, to say that Houston would like to play us again. Texas would like to play us again. Um, Oklahoma uh, would like to, um, to play us again. Somebody brings up the. The Tyree Wilson uh, face mask penalty. Well, if you're gonna if you're gonna talk about that, then you have to talk about the uh, Nehemiah Martinez play where he it it looked like that pass should have been called incomplete. wasn't that, Wasn't it Nehemiah? Wasn't there 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 was a play in there that we talked about that was kind of offsetting where where we get the call on the face mask and then there was the that we got a no call or there wasn't a call made if they'd have reviewed it. That ended up, I think it was a Nehemiah Martinez catch that ended up con- com- culminating in a touchdown. That if that play was done over, there would either been a penalty on that play or an incomplete pass on that play. Because we talked about it at the time, going, well, <clears throat> if you're going to complain about the Tyree Wilson face mask, then you've got to look at this play too that we got a break on. I do not remember that play. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I do not remember what you are speaking of. And if you want to get into the Hey, sometimes you get the good calls and sometimes you get the bad calls. Don't do it about the TCU game because we got three really bad ones that went against us that were massive. Okay, that's yeah. not a game where you say that. Okay, well, I, I just and some and you're, you're but you're right that sometimes you get calls and sometimes you for you and sometimes you get them against you. But man, we got a lot of them against us after the TCU. Yeah. No, at the TC, that's not the game to, to bring have, that up. I have I to did. go back through my notes. I just remember there was a. I just remember there was a play in there going. Okay, 
that that you was, remember it, Jeff? See, the, the what I remember our conversation about the TCU game was while it was a phantom face mask call. Watching it live, we all thought yeah. it was a face mask. Yeah, yeah. Like it wasn't yeah. a situation where like, that Again, wasn't a face mask. The ones that yeah. angered me more were the Miles Price pass, yeah. non pass yes. interference yeah, call. That, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Where he almost caught it and he didn't, and then they just decided since he almost caught it, we won't throw a flag. Yeah. Even though clearly he had been mm-hmm. uh, interfered with, and then there was a pass interference in the end zone that was called. That was. Not pass interference. Um, well, it's just if you're gonna not call Miles, how are you yeah. gonna call that? Th- yeah. They had given. This is how we're calling yeah. it, and now we're gonna and call so, it like this now. And so again, the Tyree Wilson clearly wrong, but in real time, we all thought we saw it too. Yeah. Uh, Broadcasting 101. Um, this from the uh, School of Journalism at uh, Texas Tech. You got to remember to what you're talking about if you're gonna play devil's advocate, Chuck. Yes, you're exactly right. That hasn't been the history of this show. <laughs> it's much more fun when we don't know what we're talking about. Not always about. fair. Not usually accurate. That's who we are. We're just try to be entertaining. <laughs> just try. Your morning blend of sports. K-State is uh, coming off a big win over Oklahoma. Of course, the Red Raiders off their 37-34 overtime win over number 22, Texas. And humor. Sure to tell them that. You, you suggested that. <laughs> And, of course, they got a big laugh. This is the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3. Catch the show live weekdays from 6 to 9 on Double T 97.3 FM or on the Double T 97.3 mobile app. And thank you for being with us with Jamie Linton, Jeff McGuire, and Chuck Hines. Coming up at 9, it's the end of the bench starring Choice Woodman and Jeff Haxton. Uh, you'll get uh, some afternoon activity from Tech Talk today with Aaron Dickens and Dr. Mike Gustafson. And then uh, in sandwiched in between all that is uh, Lady Raider basketball. They take on Sam Houston State today. We'll have it for you on 100.7, the score at 11, along with 107.7. Yes, FM. That'll be at 11. Uh, the tip time is 11.30. And just a reminder, if you're going to the game, know that there's going to be 10,000 kids there. It's going to be awesome. going to be a great environment. But a lot of yellow dogs, and so they want you to park on the north end, even if you've got a west side parking pass. So just little man helping man there. All right, uh, this from the Yates Flooring Center chat line. I used to work for a large ranch. I rode in helicopters six mornings a week during spring and fall roundup. We uh, herded cattle into 100-acre traps for cowboys. Next day, cowboys worked cattle in lots. Quite a bit of experience flying like uh, quarter horse heads cows. Don't eat before work. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sounds like a cool job. Yeah. Uh, things like this OBJ stuff is what makes pro football seem like a circus. I can't help but wonder how college athletes are affected by such nonsense and where college sports are headed. Washed up guy. Agree with everything you said, washed up guy. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit of a circus. Uh, Bobby Hot Dog, sounds like Chuck might be angling for a timeshare opportunity with Jerry's yacht. <laughs> well. Uh, this, from maybe somebody that's got some experience in this, a helicopter in trouble has the glide capability of a falling rock. Mm. Mm. That's fun. Robert says, don't use OBJ until the playoffs. He attracts attention from other players. Maybe positively and negatively. So I don't know. I, well, you'd I, like to think it would open things up. Yeah, right. For other receivers right. of the run game, mm-hmm. and tight end, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I think I think all that is, uh, I think that all all that is fair. So, uh, we shall uh, we shall see how uh, all this uh, transpires. With uh, it does seem like they're they're destined for each other, doesn't it? The Cowboys and Odell Beckham Jr. It feels like the perfect fit. <laughs> that was uh, Cowboy fan Jeff McGuire. I just, just anywhere but Buffalo. I don't care. I don't care if he signs with the Giants. I don't care if he signs with the Cowboys. Who's the mm-hmm. other team? Then they're one more. Ah, those are the, those are the three care. right now. There I was... don't care. I, you know what? I prefer he sign with the Giants. Because I don't want him on the Bills, and mm-hmm. if he's on the Cowboys, then we're going to have to talk about him. Okay. And it feels like one member of this crew really enjoys talking about OBJ. Well, I just, I, I think, 
I think, I, I think he's a hot fasc- topic right now. There's no question. I think people are fascinated by that, you know, topic. Yeah. Fascinated. <laughs> fascinated. 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 When you when you think of the people, are they in these two rooms? I think the the people in other rooms. No, not but not these two, right? I think you are fascinated in the wrong way. What do you think, cowboy fan? Do you think if you I, ask, think, I, I think they should sign him. What the hell? I, I think the fans. You're are not split. a Cowboys fan. I think yes, Cowboys, Cowboys fans Cowboys are split. Fan. Cowboys fans. Okay, so you want the Chiefs to sign him? No, 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 I don't. No, 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 no. I don't think he's a fit there. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think Cowboys fans, true Cowboys fans, who are that is their number one team, do you think, what percentage do you think want the Cowboys to sign him? I think 75%. I would go above 50%. I'm, I might go that high. My, I probably would be a little bit lower. But I think it's above 50%. I, yeah. I, I, was, I think I was in my mind at like 70%. Okay. I think, I'm at, I, think I would go 60-40, but mainly mm-hmm. because I'm so. in the 40 and I want there to be more of us. So we're, we're all about the same. Then, yeah. Really. Yeah. So, but I am definitely. But I think the there 40. are plenty of Cowboys fans that are mm. like, no, no. Yeah. Uh, somebody says this. Nah, I'm a Cowboys fan. I'm out. Mm-hmm. Uh, the helicopter guy says uh, we check the Jesus nut every day. I don't know what the Jesus nut is on a helicopter, but they checked it every day. Okay. I don't know what that means. Yeah. Pro- it's probably not what we think. <laughs> I'm guessing. I think it's the thing that makes sure the blades are still working. Oh, But that's yeah. a guess. That's yeah. a complete guess. I'm trying to use some context, context clues here. Okay. Context clues. That would be that. That'd be important. Uh, Eight twenty this morning here on the morning drive. One uh, Big Twelve basketball game last night. Iowa State in the Big East, Big Twelve or Big Twelve Big East battle. Uh, number twenty three, Iowa State beat St. John's seventy one to sixty. I thought the thing was over with. I didn't do. What? Oh wait, that was Monday. That was Sunday. I'm sorry. That was Sunday. Today's that was Sunday. That was. I think that's the last. Okay. There were no Big Twelve games last night. Nope. Tonight in the Big 12, you got number 17, Illinois, at number two, Texas, in the Jimmy V Classic. Mm-hmm. Number 12, Baylor, plays host to Tarleton. You know who that is, right? It's a Billy Clyde's team. Yeah. Hi. Billy Clyde. <laughs> okay. She texts him and asks him what he thinks about uh, Josh. Jacob DeGrom. Uh, Jacob DeGrom, yeah. He yeah. probably loves that signing. Mm-hmm. I wonder if your boy's going to sign anytime soon. Brian Cashman said they're not going to push Aaron okay. Judge. Uh, Kobe says, uh, ironic that Kobe would be commenting on the helicopter. Uh, it's not that it's the nut that holds the blades on. Okay. Uh, Jackson State plays at number 24, TCU. Uh, the Kangaroos of UMKC, now known as Kansas City, play at Oklahoma. Abilene Christian, pair of purple teams, playing at K State. Okay. And Sam Houston State plays at Oklahoma State. A pair of orange teams. Yeah, both orange purple team. Purple and both Wildcats, right? Abilene Christian. Aren't they Wildcats yeah. also? Yeah. 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 Abilene Christian, K State, Wildcats at K State. K State's favored by 13. They should just have one set of cheerleaders just to save money. Sure. Uh, <laughs> Sam Houston State Bearcats, <laughs> 7 and 1, playing at Oklahoma State. That's uh, Bearcats and Cowboys, but they're both orange. You've got Kangaroos and Sooners playing. And you got uh, TCU should have played Tarleton because then you would have had uh, a purple team against uh, a purple team. <clears throat> uh, Jackson State is a 1-6 and six in their matchup against a number 24-ranked TCU. Okay. Um, so there you go. Is Coach Prime's daughter leaving Jackson State? team I wondered team about now? that. I wondered about that. <laughs> She was. She, his son surely is coming with him, right? Well, he's already said that. Yeah. He okay. introduced him at the starting. He introduced him at his press conference. Hey, here's your quarterback right here. I mean, remember, he told everybody he's bringing luggage with him. I know. That's unbelievable. Unbelievable. I don't know that I've rooted for something to fail as hard as I'm going to root for that. To that fail. to fail? It feels like it's going to be. It, it is truly one of those things where Dion at Colorado, it's either going to be. Awesome, uh-huh. or it's going to yeah. be awful. Yeah, who knows? Maybe, maybe he can recruit there. Maybe Power Five conference and Deion Sanders, and how the the I mean the kids are into his style. Maybe, maybe it'll work great. 
See, I don't think there's, in my mind, I don't think there's any question that he can recruit and attract players. The question is, the question is this: Will he surround himself with coaches that will that will actually coach and help him develop those players? Because the level of competition is going to be substantially different than what it was at Jackson State. No question. So if he can if he can get himself like good random question uh, coaches around him, I think he's got a shot. Because I mean he's in Colorado. I mean they, but they they lag behind in facilities. They lag behind in um, nil money. Supposedly that's changing though. Supposedly that's changing, but mm-hmm. but. And transfers. If you're into this, they got the wacky tobacco on their side. So I don't know how that plays out there, <laughs> but maybe it does. Maybe that helps them. You've been listening to the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3. For more from Lubbock Sports Station, go to double T 973.com.